and welcome back to the Give and Go. I'm your coach Reynoso here with my boy. Soltero. What's up, y'all? We've got a lot to cover today as we had match day six in the Asian World Cup qualifiers go down. Make sure to subscribe to our channel as we continue covering all AFC football happening in the buildup to the 2026 FIFA World Cup. What a day, man. Yeah, what a day. I was really excited because we've seen every team play each team in their group once today marks the first day where they're now going True. to the second leg basically and face on off against each team in the reverse fixture so we've seen a lot of these teams for a long time now including the afc asian cup we're starting to see very similar patterns now so we're getting very intimate with these teams yeah. there's some separation in some groups and in some groups there's absolutely none yeah, and i think that's the group that we need to go to is group c the yeah. group of chaos as we Let's work our way backwards here. Bahrain just got a point against Australia in a game of pure madness as Australia goes up very early. Bahrain flips it completely on its head and Australia ends up tying it in the dying moments of the match. Two goals for each team, one point each. What a way to cap off this crazy, crazy group. Yeah, and honestly, this game was whack, man. This, like Chaos is the perfect word to describe it because the way we open this game is with basically an own goal. The Bahraini defender basically, just though. gives Howler. it to Yangi. Mm -hmm. Yangi grounds it around the keeper, puts it in. It's 1-0. A gift to start the game. I think we're like 10 seconds in. Yeah. And that's how this match starts off. We're in Bahrain. Remembering the first leg was a steal from, from Bahrain. True. They were in Australia and they stole it at the death. And it was looking like this game was just going to be a classic Australian 1-0 result. Bahrain were fighting, but there was nothing concrete. And then in the second half, we get a crazy equalizer. A crazy equalizer from Bahrain. An absolutely, honestly, crazy shot, but it was smart. Yeah. He oh, knew yeah. the keeper was off his line. This is the only good goal of the game. Yeah. It was a very great, beautiful goal. Please go check it out. It's from like 40 yards out. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how much. And it reached an altitude of maybe 1,000 feet. <laughs> It's ridiculous, bro. <laughs> and that's how Bahrain get back in this. But then they take the lead soon after off of a crazy Australian defender deflected shot that hits off yeah. the top, upright of the bar and then goes back to yep. the Bahraini player who, who puts it in. It's 2-1. And then well, I was thinking, Bahrain, no way. They're going to steal this again. I thought so, too. They're going to okay. steal it yeah. again from the Aussies. And then the goal that Bahrain later concede mm -hmm. in stoppage time is just, it's ridiculous, it's mm -hmm. stupid, it's unnecessary. Clear the it's ball. Slop, clear the ball. Clear the ball. It's sloppy. Sloppy and disappointing, honestly, because <laughs> I thought with the momentum that Bahrain created after that first crazy goal, it made sense to me that although that second goal was crazy and wacky, in a way, it was kind of deserved based off of momentum. You could mm. feel the shift mentally and just crazy things starting to happen. It hits the post. It ricochets back. I mean, whether that's luck, momentum, wherever it might be, Bahrain did create that for themselves. And so I was looking at them like, wow, they're really going to beat Australia not once but twice, bro? That's huge. But then you just fast forward a few minutes, Australia starts to impose themselves a little bit and they wake up after a really disappointing following after scoring that God, first goal. Yeah. I thought they generated zero offense. Okay. They in away wake up and they get a really easy game tying goal through Yankee and that ends up being the result 2-2 two, two to both these teams one point each and with it Australia still remains in second place and Bahrain goes from being in second place outright with eight points had they closed this game out to now back down to fifth with a tie as they are now tied with four other teams here on six points. The only thing distinguishing them is the goal differential. Yeah, and knowing that Japan had beaten China earlier in the day, I was actually rooting for a draw here. I want this group to be as tight as possible <laughs> until, until the very match last day, day 10, bro. I, mean, I want, I want draws, well draws, draws. And then on the last day, I want I these teams to get desperate, man. <laughs> I want to see desperation, bro. I can't believe it. And so, yeah, I can't believe it. I think I, looking at this game, you mentioned it. Australia did nothing for almost 70 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so that's why at the end of the day, I'm fine with this draw. I think it's the correct result if you're coming from this from a just perspective. Because Bahrain, yes, they did have momentum and I will give them credit for that because that's how they got their goals. But they too couldn't really generate much, but they did try. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think a draw is very fair here. But yeah, I mean, just not, not much 
difference here. Bahrain have played this consistent way yeah. basically in every single match. Thing is, this group is so tight, they might still be able to qualify directly, bro. It, it, it's insane. Might. And Australia, even with their new coach Popovich, they've at least been not been able to lose, which is good, but they, they just still lack so much intensity and passion in the offense. It's not yeah. there. Yeah, when you compare it to past teams, it's, it's crazy how yeah. much it's changed offensively for Australia. And the reason this result was so, so important after Japan did defeat China, we'll key in on that in a second, is because of the result of the Indonesia-Saudi Arabia match. Indonesia has finally gotten their first victory in this tournament. And my goodness, was it in stunning fashion as Marcelino Ferdinand, the magnificent Marcelino with a brace in this game at home, shutting down Irv Reynard's yeah. Saudi Arabia squad and defeating Saudi Arabia specifically for the first time in Indonesia's history. This is history right here with a massive three points that now puts them in third place and gives them that momentum, gives them that moment that I think they've been chasing for a while now. Exactly. This is their first victory in World Cup qualifying campaign for 2026. It's deserved. They've gotten very close mm -hmm. several times mm -hmm. throughout these last couple months. They finally get it. We saw in that first fixture against Saudi Arabia that Indonesia Indonesia probably should yeah. have won that match. So I was very excited to see that they were now going to act as hosts to this very, very weak and confused Saudi side. And from the moment go in this match, you, you could tell Indonesia were ready for this game. They immediately attacked Saudi Arabia. They were able to create a couple of chances. Saudi Arabia actually settled it down, though. They, you know, they got on the ball. They actually imposed themselves against Indonesia and made them defend as well. But then Ferdinand showed up. Yeah. He shows up big, gets the ball in the box, little pump fake, nice and then fake. drills it. A beautiful fake. Indonesia go up 1-0 to absolute scenes. It's scenes, dude. And that's what makes me happy because we've been seeing the atmospheres that they can provide yeah. for this team, but they've had to settle for draws or a couple losses, especially after the game we saw against Japan as well happening at home. To give them this performance, I think, was fitting. And then Ferdinand, I mean, swagged out, man, Feel Doing himself with that kudu celebration after the second goal with the beautiful <laughs> chip shot improvisation over the goalkeeper to give him the 2-0 lead goes and sits down on the yeah. chair i love moments like that and indonesia was just it was a party bro it was a party as they get three massive points here and for saudi arabia man i mean i, I want to come and ask you the question do you think irv renard can save this team no. And now that's the thing. When I saw that Renard got called back to be coach of Saudi Arabia, let's remember he was the coach for the entire 2022 True. campaign. True. So it makes sense that they go back to a guy who was probably in charge of one of the most successful Saudi Arabian teams of all time. It makes sense. But we were saying this since the Asian Cup mm -hmm. in January. It's not even Mancini's fault that he couldn't succeed with this team. The players just simply don't have the talent anymore, man. They boast the worst offense out of all 18 teams in Asian World Cup qualifying. They only have three goals, You're man. right. They only have three Bro, goals. Bro, three in six games? It's pathetic, They used man. to score that many in one match back exactly. in 2018, Exactly, dude. man. Exactly. That, that's God. Why, that, that's why I have no faith in this side uh -huh. and no disrespect to Renard, but he's given an impossible task yeah. here. He, yeah, like, honestly, they actually played a little bit better today compared Compared to the Mancini games that we saw in September and October. But it's not enough, man. The players just don't have it anymore. And just the young players, we've talked about this for the last couple of months, the young players that are here simply just don't have that same magic, that same intensity, that same fluidity of Saudi Arabian players of the past. Uh, completely agree, dude. I think it'll be a win if they're able to make it any of that third or fourth qualification spot given the state of this team offensively. For Indonesia, man, things are going to get very exciting because, yes, this group is crazy over Overall, but we do have a big Indonesian contingent that watches the show. Their next two matches, Australia and Bahrain. Dude, this is it. Yeah. Like, this is it right here. And especially that Bahrain match specifically, yeah. man, is shaping up to be an absolute thriller with Indonesia hosting that match. It's going to get crazy, bro. Yeah. It's going to get crazy as Indonesia sits in third place now, Saudi Arabia in fourth. Yeah, the, this is going to be honestly defining these next two matches for indonesia it it's just it's gonna get really emotional man because it, we've seen in every game i guess minus the japan game indonesia get very very close to winning mm -hmm. and, and finally they're able to pull it off here i just get scared in the sense that what if ferdinand's not the one scoring goals where is it really going to come from we saw in this match against saudi arabia rafael strike gets several opportunities mm -hmm. 
wasted every mm-hmm. single one of them, man. And he either fluffed his shot, made the wrong decision. It was honestly really disappointing because Indonesia, we know in space, are so threatening. And if if Ferdinand's not finishing these chances, I get worried that the rest of Indonesia is going to waste those chances. So the other players outside of Ferdinand are going to have to step up in front of goal if Indonesia want to qualify for this World Cup. The thing is, the energy's there, the spacing's there, the defense is now, is now there. We, we said the defense That's has true. greatly yeah. improved, and it has. They got a clean sheet today. The problem is, is I, I just get worried when it... I just get worried if other strikers aren't going to show up. Yeah, no, we had Ragnar also, I think, had an opportunity today that he couldn't put past the goalkeeper. Yeah. And either this one or the Japan game, I remember. Yeah. But Indonesia, I think that's one of the biggest storylines is the experience of the team. You know, mm-hmm. maybe they don't end up having that killer threat, but at the very least, this team is so young that in the future, they can look back on this qualifying campaign and build off of that. But I'm still hoping that they get to the World Cup because I was going to ask you, if you're Indonesian, I mean, if I offered you third place after six yeah. games, six points, you've already played Japan once, do you take that deal given the state of how crazy this group is and that they're technically also tied for last on points, just goal differential making the difference? I think. Would you take it? I, no. I think it's if it's this tight, man, you've got to go for second place. you got to give everything to go for a second place. you got to make calls to Rafael Stroik every week and be like, <laughs> how you doing, man? You doing good? Make sure he's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give he's, him a scoring in training, man. you know, just stuff like that. Get everyone on a nice morale, bro, because uh, I honestly didn't think it'd be this good six matches in. They're a point behind automatic qualification. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's why I think you take the deal. You do, but the, no, no. the caveat is crazy, bro. Because last place is staring at you in the face right yeah. now, but they're one point from second place. They win both matches in their next window. I know that's saying a lot here, but yeah, they is. win both. That could basically do it for them and automatically qualify them to the World Cup, bro. A ridiculous opportunity here. For Indonesia, you could say the same for basically all the teams here as well yeah yeah, you could and the reason we're so focused on that second place position is because i mean nothing is more clear in this region than japan's dominance and uh, assertion of the first place spot here 16 points now with another victory as they take down china who is coming off of i believe two consecutive victories and now gets themselves into the conversation of potentially qualifying with six points as well japan though continuing their momentum and scoring seven goals now in their two games this window as they put three past china today yeah g- going into this match i was low-key excited simply because china have found their stride mm-hmm. you know let's be completely mm-hmm. honest here two consecutive wins that puts them up to six points crazy. and in this group that's those are so <laughs> valuable man it's crazy <laughs> And they were hosting Japan. So I was just like, you know what? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Just maybe they can do a little something. And honestly. We got that. I'll say for, that. for 30 minutes, they were actually, uh, maybe not going toe to toe, but they were competing with Japan. And they were actually not letting Japan play their fluid football. For, I would say, at least 20 to 25 minutes, China employed a really good high press, and they made it very uncomfortable for Japan. It's exactly what I was hoping to see. Now, the thing is, it's Japan, so they were eventually going to find a way. It ended up being two set pieces, which I think if you're China, very frustrating, considering it was you were actually executing your game plan to perfection yeah, yeah. for it to be a set piece to make it 2-0 I, that, I was actually very disappointed by that because it just ended up being too simple for Japan they did everything right on the pitch to make it difficult but they just didn't get physical in the box yeah. and that, that's where it gets really frustrating for China but if you don't look at that it's a good performance from China they actually got one back, got one back at, in the second half so made it, it 2-1 at made, one point made it 2-1 overall yeah we knew Japan was going to win this game no matter what but I think even with this loss this is more good for China I think you can look at this and be like look the first one was what seven nil Mm -hmm. eight eight nil Mm -hmm. I already forgot this one three one much much better massive improvement for China and as we've been saying this entire time this is huge for them Mm -hmm. because now they actually too could qualify automatically in that second spot they're right there here's what's crazy man out of all the teams remaining they're the team that won't have to face Japan in the remaining four matches if I offer it to you, you're in last place, but you're also one point off of second place, and you're the only team that doesn't have to face against Japan in the final four games. God. I'm taking that deal. 
yeah. I'm taking that deal. And so China now, I think, sets themselves up for a really exciting following four matches as Japan continues just just thriving. Yeah. You know, we, we if anything, the topic I want to talk about then was we mentioned the first time we saw them play uh, or the first game they had in this in this qualification round over under 35 goals. <laughs> oh, yeah. Four games left. They're at 22 right now. Yeah. Do they get there? Four games <laughs> left. They would need 13 goals. Crazy. They might get right yeah. at 35. Crazy because I was looking at their lineup today and this almost felt like a like A minus B plus type team with Mitoma on yeah. the bench and you had other big names as well, just not really playing. But you saw a guy step up like Ogawa today who got the brace and just really good controlled finishes for both of his goals and ultimately putting the game away. Once it got tight, 2 1, Ito completely crossing over the Chinese defender, sends a beautiful ball in and Ogawa finishes it 3 1, taking care of business. Things are looking great for Japan. Things are looking really really good yeah for japan it's just rinse and repeat at this point we we made the comment last month saying that it's looking like japan's not going to really get tested in this group whatsoever the other teams just really are a complete step below their level so for japan you just got to keep moving forward get as many goals as you can and you know just keep mm -hmm. that morale high let's just have fun here man as we close out this group specifically group c four games left how does it end yeah <laughs> <laughs> obviously japan up top Oh, man. Uh, this is so hard. Damn. This is so hard, man. This is so hard. Uh, what if China get third, dude? What if China get third? All I can say, rather, is I can pick the two teams that won't make it. I think Saudi Arabia is not making it. I think, I think Saudi Arabia is not making it. They're not going to make it. And a part of me wants to say Bahrain is not going to make it either. So that means Indonesia either finish in third or fourth. <sighs> Which, yeah. which is the same. This is, it's the same as far as oh, third or fourth is, is to the next stage, right? Even Australia, bro. I'm, not, I'm just not sold on Australia either. Like, I could see them maybe potentially imploding here. I just, I feel like there's something about Australia, that classic mm -hmm. conservatism that won't let them lose. I think they'll be able to tie the rest of their matches, whereas Indonesia, Saudi, Bahrain, China will lose at least one it, probably two more games right yeah and i, I think australia won't lose as yeah. many and i think they'll edge that second position but i do i do see indonesia as at least the fourth best team here man i'm so interested to see yeah indonesia but then china uh they're a wild card now man. they are a wild card now guys let us know down below who do you have making it out of the group as we have four games left in group c the group of chaos moving on to the next group we have group b where we saw a lot of entertaining action specifically in the jordan kuwait game where we saw kuwait end up tying jordan after going at them for a while being down a goal but showcasing Casing that they they got some flair, they got some technical players, and then ultimately was represented in an absolute golazo from outside the box to tie the match one one. Daham with a banger, and Kuwait ends up getting a point out of Jordan. Yeah, and we saw in the first leg of this fixture, Jordan also lose the lead against Kuwait. This one was a little bit more jarring if you're a Jordan fan because yeah. the second half was taken over yeah. by Kuwait. Jordan couldn't get onto the ball and when they did they were very sloppy with it. Kuwait were way more proactive in getting the ball back and I mean if you did watch the second half Kuwait probably should have scored more goals. Mm -hmm. the, the first goal they scored was an absolute laser of a goal 30 yards out ridiculous skips off the ground goes into the back of the net gorgeous goal please go watch it but after that they had three four more half chances just put one of those away yeah just put one of those away and they end up getting three massive points at home against jordan honestly they probably deserved it at the end especially since jordan the dying 10 five minutes really committed a lot of men forward so there's a lot of space at the back some bad decision making for kuwait ended up seeing this stay one one so if you're jordan this is lucky and, mm -hmm. and concerning as well mm -hmm. because they should have seen this out considering they dominated the first half. Yeah, and I, I think the result is deserved. I think Kuwait deserved that goal. They deserved yeah. the point here with the way they fought back after being down 1-0. And I like Kuwait, man. Yeah. This game really sold me on them. Like, I liked them. I liked seeing that that shade of blue that they got. I like the fans in attendance. They're very passionate for their team. And then just the players that they have are entertaining and they're fearless. That's what I like about them. They yeah. may not have the same quality as the top teams in Asia, but they're fearless, man. They're not scared to go at them. And so I'm glad that they got this result to now cement themselves in fifth place at the moment as they're just peeking into the potential playoff spot that is available to them with Oman right in front of them on five points.
five points. Yeah. Now their games against Oman and Palestine, or if they can win those matches, I think they'll secure a next stage qualification. So this was great for Kuwait. And you're right, man. I, I love the way they play offense. It's not necessarily the flashiest, but it is fearless. Like at a certain point in the second half, they just started shooting. Mm-hmm. They just started mm-hmm. just taking shots, man. And the thing is, they were feeling themselves. So they were on target with a lot of ferocity, yeah. man. So we've seen Kuwait have really good flashes throughout this campaign, but maybe not get the result. They're very close to getting three points here. It's those games against Oman and Palestine that are going to be basically finals huge, for them. Huge, huge. And when it comes to the Oman-Kuwait debate and who would I rather see in that position, I mean, personally, I want to see Kuwait. Wait. Oh, yeah. I want to see Kuwait. But I think Kuwait is also representative of the level of AFC right now and how a team who's right now technically not in qualification zone can be so good, man. Like the level yeah. has really improved for the lowest teams in Asia. They're they're just so good, bro. They really are. Because Kuwait, despite them only having four points, I mean, they've only lost two games. The other four, they tied, man. Yeah. They just can't get that victory. Yeah. They can't. But they've still been and proven to be a really feisty team. Any concern here for Jordan going forward? I will just say this is a recurring pattern where they usually have one brilliant half, and if they don't score enough goals in that half, they either lose or draw. And I I, I think that's concerning in terms of just game management because obviously if you do get to the World Cup, which I really hope Jordan do, and I I do think they will, you're going to be playing against teams who have just way better game management or way more relentless over the course of 90 minutes. Jordan will have no chance Mm -hmm. if they can't focus for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of being able to play up to their opponent. For me, it's focus. And that's what's even more frustrating because at a certain point, if you don't have the talent, you just concede. But for Jordan, I really do think they have the talent to play at a top level. We saw them make the final in Asia, beating big teams in big fashion but we've seen throughout this campaign just not have the game management and drop points where they absolutely should not have yeah i want them to you know they're putting themselves in a stressful position here as they initially to get into this round of qualification had to go head to head in the final game against tajikistan to make it through they take care of business they come through but now i mean they're riding that way between automatic qualification and a playoff spot where it leaves it up to you know drama yeah. the crazy things could happen here and so i hope that in the next four games they can wake up and see that they do have a genuine opportunity they still haven't lost that that chance of getting automatic qualification but they need to get start getting good results in anticipation for that final match the 10th game for them is against Iraq. They got to stay in punching range so that they at least have the opportunity to get automatic qualification. I think that's big for Jordan. And now that I brought him up, let's stay here with Iraq, who got three crucial points today against Oman away from home as they continue to kind of manage these really, really tight games. I was seeing their past six matches, removing the South Korea 3 2 loss. All other five matches either ended 1 0 in favor of Iraq or 0 0 as a tie. Yeah. Really interesting pattern that they've set for themselves now as they continue to do the same thing, but ultimately get the three points against Oman. All right, Iraq, you know their game plan going into a match. Get a goal, defend. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, man. Yeah. And the thing is, it, it, it works. Mm-hmm. I will say they're probably one of the most consistent teams in AFC World Cup qualification. If, if my main gripe against Jordan is just not being consistent game to game, it's the exact opposite with Iraq. That's my praise for them is they are consistent match to match. They're incredibly resilient. They're very conservative, but it's all by design. Their plan is just get a goal be scrappy in the box, and then from there, use their midfield and their back line to be very physical and very defensive. The thing is, against these opponents outside of South Korea, it works perfectly, man. It works perfectly. So the, given now that they have a two-point lead against Jordan, I don't know if I trust Jordan to be consistent in their next four matches. I think Iraq might be able to secure the second place position and qualify automatically given the way they play every game just trust them more man yeah i just trust them more and the goal they scored today i thought was a beauty yeah. a beauty with the i don't know who it was but the player who made the hockey assist essentially dribbles it has a nice step over move hands it off to ahmed yassin in transition and then Yassim sends a beautiful ball in who Yusuf Ayman picks up and scores. Beautifully plays goal. Great, just vintage Iraq, uh, you know, one-two touch play. Just guys being on the same page, having that chemistry. And then you're right. Once they got that goal, they just settled into the game and they saw the results out. What does it say about Oman? What does it say about Oman? Because 
Bro, when I think about Oman, I think of them as bullies. You know what I mean by this? Bullies tend to pick on people that are smaller, the smaller size <laughs> folks, you know, they pick on them. But what's that one thing that all the small people say? They say, go pick on somebody your own size. <laughs> And then when they do that, the difference is shown. Yeah. Once they're leveled eye to eye with someone who sees them as, a, as an equal, you see them fail. And that's how I feel this Oman team is. They pick on the smaller teams, they get the results they need, but when it comes to playing against a top team or a team that's just better than them, or even on the same level, they end up falling short, man. Yeah. And so this shows as they lose at home to this Iraq team. Yeah, and that's why I wasn't surprised by this result. Uh, going into this match, I had Iraq winning like 99 out of 100 times, simply because of that exact fact. Oman cannot beat teams that are better than them. That's they exactly. just can't do <laughs> yeah. it. It's insane. <laughs> Luckily for them, a fourth place position is enough to go to the next yeah, stage. Yeah. But for me, it would end there. Yeah. So that's why I hope, as we've said just earlier, that maybe a different team that, that's not used to going deep in qualification like Kuwait or Palestine would actually be better suited for that fourth place position. But of course, they'll have to beat Oman. But yeah, those are going to be incredibly tight games because Oman love to keep it tight. But yeah, they're not going to be beating Iraq, Jordan, or South Korea. Yeah, Iraq now sits in second place with 11 points, and Oman is in fourth with six at the moment. I had highlighted before already that the the quality of AFC teams that are considered lower level, at least in this tournament, the ones that are in fifth or sixth place, are showing out, playing really good football, and just showcasing themselves to be really feisty squads. And I think that was represented in the Palestine versus South Korea match, where we saw Palestine pick up yet again a point against South Korea. <laughs> and I think just ultimately showcasing that 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 level of AFC uh, of talent, honestly, yeah. getting a point here. Yeah, more recurring patterns here for actually both Korea and Palestine. So for Palestine, the pattern for me is frustrating because when they play against opponents that are clearly better than them, they actually meet them there and they play as hard as they can. They actually relish in the fact that they are major underdogs yeah. and generally, you know, I can go for the draw or maybe get a shock win, but they play very, yeah. very well against much better opposition. But then against teams that are at their level mm -hmm. or worse, mm -hmm. they play down to that level. <laughs> yeah. It's so frustrating. So yeah. they, they want to be eternal underdogs and they don't know how to flip the switch when they play against teams that they should be That's beating. True. So it, it's very frustrating from that perspective because we've seen Palestine in the Asian Cup and here against Korea twice really show up, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and again, in both matches, they actually had chances where they could have taken the lead and won the match in both games against Korea. So it, it's fascinating, the, the bipolarity of Palestine, yeah. man. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And then for Korea, just the pattern of also playing down to their opponents sometimes because Japan doesn't do that, right? No, Japan, no. no matter who they play, they go for three goals a game, mm -hmm. right? And they usually get it. But for Korea... They, they'll go they'll get three goals every now and then but there'll be that one game where for some reason they just get a random draw against a team that they should definitely be beating and so that's why i'm always going to be cautious about korea you going into be. the world cup you have to be man this south korea team that is the the concerning factor about them it is it's been true since the asian cup and yeah. even since before that honestly and i just don't see a team that i think will be able to overcome those demons when it comes to playing top top teams at the world cup so that's my concern because going into this game they had been on a good run getting straight victories after victory after victory but this is just a little annoying to me it's a little yeah. annoying to me that they they end up dropping points here to palestine but palestine man and i, I just want to highlight the technique on that first goal Dude. from a uh, kumbar what an insane and clever finish as kim min jay sends a really soft and weak ball to the goalkeeper kumbar goes to grab it slides tackle and i like i like what the commentator said he break danced and essentially <laughs> 360 turn on the yeah. floor while holding possession of the ball and then a beautiful mech finish to put it into the back of the net. Yeah. Insane quality, insane technique, insane improvisation to give Palestine the lead in this game. Yeah, it was a dope swivel move. Yeah, It, it really was. It really was and then Huming Sun ties it with just a class bottom of the net, bottom right corner finish to make it, it was one, a good finish. one. South Korea is currently in control of Group B with 14 points whereas Palestine still remains in last place with three. And moving on on to the final group in the AFC World Cup qualifiers. We got Group A, Group A action, and with a major, major headline being UAE thrashes, <laughs> destroys, and dominates Asian Cup winners Qatar 
5-0 with Fabio Lima getting four goals in this name. Do you know the footballing term for a man who gets four goals in a match? I actually don't. Yeah, I had to look it up today because I forgot. I don't yeah. remember. A hall. A hall. H-A-U-L. Oh, a hall. Okay. okay. Or a poker, apparently. Okay. Yeah, I like poker a little bit more. I like the bowling term for four bagger. Okay. Yeah, I like that too. I really do. But Fabio Lima, man, what what a performance as he scored two penalty kicks, yeah. one play live in action, and then to me the highlight, the, the free kick golazo. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous goal. Fabio Lima carries this UAE team to a victory over Qatar. And my God, what a blaring <laughs> result for Qatar here as they lose terribly. Yeah, man. And I, I think that's just the, the takeaway from this is Qatar is insane. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with them, man. They're mentally insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the, they'll they'll have a really good game, and then they'll go on a string of like I, I don't even know how to describe them, man. Mm-hmm. I just I've never really seen a team this volatile in performance in world football. But Qatar is that two-time back-to-back AFC yeah, no, yeah. Asian Cup <laughs> champion. <laughs> and here they are losing 5-0 to a team that they just quite frankly should not be. And this is basically not the first time either, nope. man. They, they they had that first game against the UAE where they had a commanding lead and then they, they let the UAE back in. Literally the game a couple days ago, they had a 2-0 lead against Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan come back, tie 2-2, and it took a crazy goal from Lucas Mendes for them to even get the victory. Qatar's just all over the place, bro. All over the place. Fortunately for them, there's Kyrgyzstan and North Korea in this group that is giving them the points to stay up with the UAE and Uzbekistan. But my God, man, Qatar is so frustrating to watch because because at times it just simply looks like they have no idea what's going on. They have no idea. They, they can look so lost at times, man. And it is just so drastic comparing to how they played back in February. But I think for me, after this international window, these past two matches, it, it's official now. Because the first four games, I was like, maybe, mm. maybe that version of Qatar still exists there consistently. I don't think it does. No. I think at the end of the day, looking back at what happened at the Asian Cup, that was just Qatar getting hot at the right time and being the host nation. And just, you know, going on and winning a, winning themselves a trophy for the second time in a row. But that's it. Like, there's nothing else beyond that. <laughs> this is a true Qatar version. This is the true Qatar team that we're seeing now. After six games, fourth place in this group with seven points total. Ten goals scored, 17 goals conceded. The most God. in this group, bro. The most. Almost twice as many as North Korea and, you know, still more than Kyrgyzstan, bro, who I think has a pretty bad defense as well. Yeah. It's Qatar who ends up having the worst one, man. And that's what's frustrating is if this group was just a little tougher, if Kyrgyzstan and North Korea could just, you know, get more points i do think qatar would be sweating but they actually have a decent four point cushion yeah, man i think they got like it. i think they'll be fine to at least go to the next stage and that's where i think it'll get very dramatic and hairy for qatar depending on the draw on that next stage no true true so uae now has a combined 8-1 advantage over qatar in their two <laughs> matches because that was also one of the biggest highlights of uae so far was defeating qatar in qatar's home stadium yeah. uae has third place in in their hands with 10 points now after six games and then elsewhere we have iran uzbekistan kurdistan north korea left let's talk north korea football yeah please let's talk north korea football because <laughs> i was i was thinking about some of the biggest mysteries in the world bro the bermuda triangle right the uh the assassination of john f kennedy and then north korea sitting with only two points in this group bro i couldn't believe it after the performances I've seen from them, time in, time out. I can't believe this North Korean team only has two points to their name. Man, could things have been so different for this team had just a few things gone right for them? <laughs> They're so unlucky. It's dude. a mystery, man. They're so unlucky. Because you're right. North Korea is probably one of the most hardworking sides in this World Cup qualification. And in almost every game, maybe outside of the Iran game or also outside of maybe I think the UAE game, mm-hmm. they probably could have won their matches. <laughs> they, they probably could have gotten like, you know, six points somewhere. Yeah. But instead they have two. It's very, very frustrating if you're trying to support North Korean football. And the thing is, the same thing can be said today against Uzbekistan because... 
the opportunity was there for them to equalize through a penalty. Uzbekistan go down a man with mm-hmm. a red card. They could have gotten a couple more goals. They had they created the half chances, mm-hmm. but they end with zero goals from zero. They end with zero and zero. another loss. And so, yeah, for North Korea, I think the story for this campaign is just going to be bad luck mm-hmm. and just missed opportunity. I think it's more missed opportunity. Three missed penalties, bro. Yeah. Three missed. Every penalty they've had drawn, they've missed. And this was their second one against Uzbekistan specifically, Mm -hmm. which I think leads me to Uzbekistan. I mean, continuing this trend of nearly giving you a heart attack every game. Oh, every single time, bro. I I coined it. It's the Uzbek tease, man. Yeah. And it's a real phenomenon. It's real. It's palpable. Oh, yeah. And... It is not going to change. Mm-hmm. It, it really isn't. It's the same damn thing <laughs> every time. It doesn't matter who they play. Yeah. They're going to play to their level. If if they're playing, if their opponent's playing scrappy, Uzbekistan's going to be in a scrap fest, bro. Yep. If it's gonna, if they're playing against a really good offensive opponent, well, then all of a sudden Uzbekistan are going to pull out the flips and tricks and play fluid football. Yeah. But the thing is, they're not in control of how they play. It's completely dependent on their opponent. Facts. Very frustrating. Facts, bro. It could be 2002 Brazil. They're going to play up to them. It don't matter, but they're not going to get the three points there, man, because they followed this performance up after losing to Qatar in a game where, yes, they came back from being down 2 0 in the final moments. Uh, that comeback becomes meaningless as Qatar gets a game winner. But then in this one, man, against a team that I think they should have more easily dominated. They, they, they made it very, very tight. And they ultimately did tight. give North Korea that chance with the penalty that just didn't fall for them. So just crazy, bro, what Uzbekistan is doing mm. and the fact that even with all that drama, even with all that chaos, they still are in second place with 13 points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and this this is massive. Yeah. This is what I was hoping for at the very beginning when there was no matches played. I knew Uzbekistan could do it. I just didn't think it would be this tight because literally, dude, every game has been mm-hmm. so damn tight. Mm-hmm. But we're here. We're here. We're in second place in an automatic qualifying spot. I think it's going to come down to that UAE game. That, the UAE, man, UAE is scary now. Yeah. They're, they're scaring me now. They're, they're right there in punching range, and I can yeah. see them wanting automatic qualification. They face them in the ninth match of this campaign, so that's going to be a must-watch game and seeing the results and the build-up to that match as well. North Korea most likely eliminated as they're on two points yeah. now, and Qatar is in fourth with seven, so it's a five-point gap. That's going to be tough to, tough to make back. It's still not technically done, but it's going to be tough to make back. The final game that we had in this group was Iran going away to Kyrgyzstan and getting three points as they continue taking care of business in this group, controlling the first seed, 16 points total in Kyrgyzstan, making this a really tight game ultimately, testing Iran, but Iran once again coming out on top. Yeah, a couple really good goals from Iran to actually take a 2-0 lead, but... Joel Kojo, man. We've said that name several <laughs> times in this World Cup camp- qualifying <laughs> campaign. We're going to say it again because he I gets so. a brace today, yeah. getting Kyrgyzstan back in this match. Some really good improvisation on the first goal, and then the second one, just a nice, nice finish just mm-hmm. in general. So so he's going through the prime of his international this career. It. And it's also really fun to yeah. see because Kyrgyzstan don't have a lot to offer. Their defense is just too spotty. It's too open. They're always going to concede no matter what so they just can't be trusted their offense is all right but Joe Kojo is just showing up every single every time, time and it's beautiful to see in front of his home crowd getting the equalizer was honestly amazing to watch but then Sadar Azmoon shows up and he puts it home gets the third goal off of a header a really good ball from the right hand side Iran close it out I do think they were overall deserving of this win Kyrgyzstan at best just throughout this entire group stage have been very feisty mm-hmm. but but that is it they are just nothing more than a very feisty team that's it no if they don't have kojo man <laughs> i don't know if they if they if they are even on three points uh, i mean he's doing everything that he can possibly do credit to him because i've no, i've noted it from the very beginning just the responsibility that they're getting that they're putting on one single man and he's doing the most he absolutely yeah. can and that header that he scored today was insane. The yeah. placement on it, the placement on it, and the power was ridiculous. But Iran, man, I mean, they're the second best team when it comes to points uh, accrued so far, and just taking control of this group. Is there anything to say about how they've done it so far? You know, ultimately being a, a pretty dominant team in this group, I'd say. Similar to South Korea, I, I'm going to be very cautious with Iran, simply because I think. If you consider yourself to be a powerhouse in Asia, 
You have to dominate the way Japan dominates. Iran, in my opinion, while they are close to that, are not that. They are not on a Japan type level. Now, if you would have asked me a year ago going into the Asian mm-hmm. Cup, I actually said that they were on Japan's level. But I just think mm. they've dropped as mm. far as their dominant performances. I think in the qualifying campaign, of last cycle, they were winning games a lot yep. more easily. Whereas, yes, they're still winning the same amount of games here. I just think they're having to work a little bit harder. Whereas Japan, I, th- I still think are winning with pretty much a lot of ease. I don't see the same there's thing with Iran. Yeah, there's a big difference yeah. there. Huge difference right there. And this is Iran's second consecutive game where they win three to two. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Funny yeah. score lines there. But Iran, first place, Kyrgyzstan in fifth. Folks, let us know. What do you think about Group A? And what do you think about the rest of these groups as we get matched Day six now officially in the books and a long break until the following match day all the way in March 2025. So make sure to subscribe so you can remember to keep up with us and watch our reactions to the AFC region in a few months. We'll see you soon. Peace.